In today's world, almost everyone uses the internet, from kids, teenagers, to adults. But most of us users do not even know where the internet came from, what are its uses and advantages, as well as what the risks are in using the internet. Today, in this video, we are going to talk about those topics. But before that, do not forget to hit the subscribe button down below as well as ring the bell notification so that you will be updated when our next video comes out. Thank you very much. Now, on to the video. First, let's talk about the internet. Now, the internet basically is a channel that provides information and communication between multiple devices all across the globe. It is another computer network that allows us to share files, communicate with one another, send pictures, send videos, post different opinions, post different experiences, and etc, etc, etc. But the internet wasn't always like that. Before, the internet was much simpler and way slower than the internet today. Let us now talk about the brief history of the internet. The conception of the internet began in the year 1962 when Joseph Carl Licklider came up with the idea of connecting multiple computers all across the globe into a singular network. He then shared his idea, of course, to ARPA or what we call the U.S. Department of Defense Advanced Research Project Agency and then they started working on the project. People by Leonard Kleinrock, Thomas Merrill, and Lawrence G. Roberts on packet switching theory pioneered the, the first wide area connection. And then Robert began to publish a plan to release what they called ARPANET. It is an ARPA-funded computer network that became a reality in 1969. In 1973 now, Robert Kahn and Vinton Cerf collaborated to develop what we call the TCP-IP or the Transfer Control Protocol Internet Protocol. Now, what does TCP-IP do? Basically, TCP-IP is a technology that links multiple networks together in such a way that when one network is taken down or collapses, the others do not meaning the network will continue running. And also in the year 1970s, a man named Robert Metcalf developed a system that we call Ethernet nowadays. Ethernet was first called Alto Aloha and it allowed transfer of more data over wired connections. Then in the 1980s, the Ethernet was made available to workstation computers as well as personal computers. So now they can establish what we call the local area network or LAN. Meaning personal computers and workstation computers can now share files between each other without a CD, a floppy disk back then or any other storage device. They could just copy and paste files from all over the network. Then in the year 1982, a man named Dave Farber introduced a project that would make or build a network using telephone lines, making it inexpensive. He then connected this project, which was named PhoneNet, to ARPANET and the first commercial internet service provider that was called Telenet. Then, in the year 1985, Paul Mocapetris, John Postel, and Craig Patridge created the domain name system. In 1985, the first domain was registered and it was called Symbolics.com and it was owned by a computer manufacturing firm. Moving to the 1990s, the ARPANET was decommissioned and in came Tim Berners-Lee together with his colleagues at CERN. So, they developed what we now know as Hypertext Markup Language or HTML as well as Uniform Resource Locator or URL. And thus, these um, technologies paved the way to the creation of the World Wide Web or the WWW. The internet was booming in the year 1995. 
Microsoft launched the Windows 95, Amazon, Yahoo, and eBay were all launched, Internet Explorer as well, as well Java was created. Google was founded in the year 1998, and in the year 1999, music piracy was at an all-time high because of a platform that was released and it was called Napster. The first internet virus was also discovered in the year 1999. In the year 2000s, everyone saw the dot-com bubble. Businesses became online. Basically, Google reaches peaked in the search engine market. Uh, wireless internet connection or wireless internet communication was established or created. Now we know it as Wi-Fi. We now have Facebook, Google, Instagram, YouTube, and a lot more uh, platforms. More websites came. And basically, today, most of us use the internet. Now we know how the internet began, let us now talk about its uses and its advantages. First, the internet was made for faster communication. And I can say now that it is true. Today, we live in a situation where everyone cannot go out because we are in lockdown. As of filming this video, everyone in the Philippines is on lockdown, so we cannot actually go out. But information can still be shared from one person to another, whether be it they live in another place or whether they be it in another room, you can talk to them in a faster way using the internet. We have Messenger, we have Telegram, Viber, Instagram, DMs, as well as Twitter. We can share our messages through Facebook through YouTube videos and etc. And like what I'm doing, I can discuss my lessons online through a platform called YouTube. I can also share the video on other social media platforms, making the spread of information much faster and easier. Next, of course, entertainment. Everyone uses the internet for entertainment. May they be for social media, for watching videos, or finding your favorite cat video, <laughs> sending chats to your friends, to your family, your loved ones, playing your favorite mobile game or your favorite online game, watching movies online, and etc. Social networking is also one feature or use of the internet. We can now connect with a lot of people using the internet. We have a lot of social platforms today. We have, let's say, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Blogger, and etc, etc, etc. Basically, we now live in a society where everyone has their social media or their social networking accounts. So, we can actually give credit to the internet for that. While it is a known fact that the internet is very useful, there are some risks in using the internet. Because many people are using the internet nowadays, people are now more prone to being bullied. People have different opinions on different things, so it is very much likely that people with different opinions from others would bully those people who has visions different from them. Another one is the exposure to violence, to pornography, to the glorifying of alcoholic drinks, smoking, and all other vices. The internet is a very broad place to be in. It is a very risky place to be in. What I've mentioned a while ago was only some of the risks that the internet poses. In the next video, we are going to talk about more risks that we can encounter when we are going to use the internet and we will also talk about the different techniques and tips that can help you evade those risks. The government has also made uh, several steps to suppress any internet risks that could happen. All of those we are going to talk about in our next video. So before we end this video, I want everyone to please hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell down below. If you have any suggestions and comments and anything in between, leave your comment down below. And as well as to like this video, share this video, and as always, see you next time and goodbye.